It's Gordon, aka Eeyore Equus, from Reddit's Astrophotography subreddit. And tonight we're going to make a quick, short, little, simple uh, workflow video for processing uh, an, an astro landscape image from Reddit user Nolds. He has posted a request for some assistance. He's, he's new to the hobby and he's looking for, to, for some information on how to process an image that he shot recently. And he posted this in our sub. So we're going to give him a quick work, workflow here, processing this image in PixInsight. Now obviously, Nolds, you may have other tools, or all, any of you may have other tools, but some of the concepts at least should be uh, fairly, fairly consistent throughout most tools. The idea of stretching things and adjusting levels and adjusting uh, colors with curves and saturation and things of this nature. So I've pulled the image here into PixInsight. This is the raw image. And the first thing I'm going to do in PixInsight is I'm going to start the screen transfer function, one of the first things we always do. And I'm going to just what we call auto stretch this image. Now I've made another video, I'll link that uh, in the description of this one, about the idea between linearity and nonlinearity, or what a linear image is and what we mean by stretching the image. But what screen transfer function in PixInsight is going to do is we're just going to do a quick auto stretch. The auto stretch gives us an idea of what data is actually there. What does this data look like when we compress the histogram to get the complete dynamic range of the uh, of the image uh, in between the high and the low points of the histogram? And again, I talk about that in more detail in that other video. Uh, as you can see, this is actually a fairly nice image. So the first thing I'm going to do, and, and we've got we've got quite a bit of quite a bit of good signal to work with here. So we're looking forward to this one. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop this sucker out so that I'm dealing only with stars and the Milky Way. Uh, the running joke would probably be for me at this point to say because I happen to know that the mods in our astrophotography are you know real dicks about this but anyway be that as it may I just happen to prefer working with strictly with astro images not terrain that's just me obviously Nold you can you, you can process this however you want to. So I'm going to crop this. Now I'm dealing uh, specifically with astro elements. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look and say, okay, what kind of color do I have in here? I'd really like to see what my color looks like and how much color I can get out of this. Uh, okay, so uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use PixInsight's color calibration. Now most processing programs will have some way or another of processing the color wherein you tell the program that some area or some object or some part of the image is a representative white if you will uh, representative of the basic overall color uh, color of the image we're going to do that with a preview here now typically we'd probably like to use the core of a nebula or a galaxy or something but in this case the, the, the core or the, the main stripe of the Milky Way usually works fairly well in these wide field images. We're going to put another preview that we're going to tell PixInsight this represents the background of the image. Alright, so we're going to tell it that our reference image for the white reference is preview 1 and we're going to tell it that the reference for, for the background is preview 2 and even though they look the same to us this technique actually usually works reasonably well and there, yeah, that looks a little bit better. We're starting to get some of the blues and purples now here out of the side of the Milky Way. Uh, and we're going to redo our auto stretch to make sure that our levels are right. Okay, that's that's starting to look, getting some good contrast out of there. That's looking pretty good. Okay. Now, next thing I would usually do in most images, whoops, is I would probably at this point do some kind of background extraction to get rid of some uh, gradients and some vignetting but there's really not much of that in this image and what little vignetting there was mostly cropped out when we did the crop. I'm going to go ahead and run the automatic background extractor here just to see maybe what we get out of it. I just want to kind of get a feel for what it might do. I'm expecting though honestly that we probably won't want to keep the results. Let's see here before, that's before, that's after. I, well, I think I probably like the before a little better. I think it I think it interpreted some of the the glow of the Milky Way as a gradient and probably didn't want it to do that. Now obviously we could spend more time with ABE or we could even go with dynamic background extraction here where we actually set the points to model the background uh, but probably beyond the scope of a quick little video like this. But you could do some more work there if you were really concerned about the gradients. Okay, I mentioned color earlier. Whoops, that's the wrong tool. I mentioned color earlier. 
one of the more popular ways that people will uh, modify color in most again most packages most processing programs is through some kind of curves utility they'll, they'll adjust curves some some software uh, Photoshop for example may have an actual saturation tool but usually you'll find something like this in something labeled curves called curves uh, pix inside is no different it has curves transformation what we're going to do is we're going to tell it that we want to do saturation down here we're going to tell it to make sure that we're following the, the active image the one that we're working on and basically all we're going to do is we're going to hit the little preview button here and that's consistent with throughout pix insight the little circle means a preview so we're going to then this is kind of a live preview and we're basically just going to run the saturation way up till we see what we get boy look at the colors pop now now we're getting some nice blues some purples we've got a little bit of maybe blue in the stars that maybe they should be a little whiter we'll take care of that here in a minute but this is really starting to look like uh, like you know sort of like what we're what we're after here so we'll boost that we may have gone too far with that but that's okay who doesn't like color alright next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna use oh, let's see what do we want to do to sharpen this up how about unsharp the oddly named unsharp mask which makes things sharper I know it sounds strange uh, again most packages will have some sort of sharpening tool some sort of uh, histogram equalization tool PixInsight has all of these things uh, several others do as well uh, in this case though I'm more demonstrating the idea of what I might be looking to do rather than a specific tool I might in this case be looking to sharpen the image a little bit so we're gonna run the preview here we'll run this up and down and let you see the difference. You'll see mostly that's making in the stars here. How it kind of tweaks those stars, makes them a little sharper, but also makes them a little little brighter. There, they kind of dominate the image. But that's that's not too bad. That's not too bad. All right, we'll give that a try. Yeah, though. Yeah, we may have done too much. Now that I see it for real, it may have been it may have been a little too much. Let's see here. All right, let's try that. Let's see how that looks. No, it's even worse. All right, and this, as you'll find, is is pretty common actually in in image processing, where you'll do quite a bit of 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 work, and you'll you'll redo things several times until you get the right feel for them. That's better. Okay, I'm a little happier with that. Absolutely. Uh, next thing we're going to do here is we're going to apply our stretch, if you will. In other words, we're going to actually stretch, remove the histogram. In PixInsight, we do that with histogram transformation. In other tools, you probably have some kind of levels tool or uh, perhaps um, a develop tool, for example, in uh, uh, Star Tools. So we're, we're going to, but basically, they all do the same thing. They compress the histogram. They, they they stretch the levels so that we get the full dynamic range of the image from the top, from the bottom to the top. Uh, what you're looking at here, and here I'll turn off this auto stretch we did earlier. So remember, our image actually still looks like this right now. This auto stretch is only a screen display. It didn't actually do anything to the image. That's what we're going to do here with histogram transfer, transformation. If you'll take a look, this is a histogram and almost any imaging tool is going to have some sort of, of method of looking at the histogram of the image and it tells you how your pixels are distributed uh, this being an astro image taken at night uh, there they almost all have this in common our pixels are all compressed down here at the left end they're all very low value we don't have any really bright pixels up here at the top so what we would like to do because currently this image is displaying everything from zero no light at all to one if you will a, a one being a fully saturated bright white solid pixel it's displaying all of it but we don't have anything up here so it's reserved all this space for a bunch of pixels we don't have so eventually what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to kind of compress this down uh, now instinct might be to 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 move this top slider down and that does work you see there it's working there however we we try to avoid that if at all possible in astro images especially because when we move this down we do what we call clip the whites or clip the highs in other words we move that down and we get rid of some bright pixels that once they get above one they can't get any brighter so we clip them and we tend to lose very valuable data because the subtle differences in shade are very important to the detail of our astro images so instead with astro images we tend very much to 
adjust this by moving the midpoint of our histogram. If we can get everything down here to climb to the midpoint very quickly and then taper off, we accomplish essentially the same thing as far as uh, what our eyes see. So we're going to do that and then we'll use this these sliders here. I can use the scroll wheel on my mouse to s zoom in so I can get a little bit closer at where what these look like here. There we go. And what I'm looking to do is put this midpoint somewhere right around where the knee of that curve starts up. I, want to, I don't want any overbearing background, but I want to make sure I get all the detail. And then I'm going to try to move these zeros just enough so that some of the noise goes away and the background gets nice and dark. There we go. That looks pretty good. And there's our image. We might, might could afford to go a little bit brighter with that, which we can do again by applying another histogram transformation if we want. And it's probably pretty good there. And finally, just for one little, I don't know, we'll call it advanced technique, we're going to make a star mask here and kind of introduce the idea of what a mask is and how a mask works. And again, this is consistent through most processing programs. What we're going to do is we're going to create a separate image that lets some parts show through and blocks other parts and we call this a mask and when we apply that mask to the image then pretty much any tool that we're using will work only on the parts that are shining through the mask in other words only the parts that the mask reveals uh, in PixInsight we have a tool to make a star mask and you'll see that wherever it's white is stuff that's going to show through and wherever it's black is stuff that's going to be protected or not show through. Uh, now we would probably actually do a bit more work to clean this mask up, but just to demonstrate the point here for this video, we've made a star mask. We're going to drag this over here and the image turns a bright red. This shows us, notice that the stars however are peeking through. This shows us that all the red areas here are where they were black in the image, or in the mask, excuse me, they were black in the mask. These are protected. Whatever we do at this point is not going to happen to these red areas, but it will happen to these areas that are showing through the mask, the white areas in our mask. Now I'm going to go up here to the toolbar and disable our view of the mask. The mask is still there. Brown tab. The mask is still there. I just don't want to see it because the red is, is distracting, difficult to see what's going on. And then I'm going to go back to our curves transformation. Oops, if I can find it, I hit it for myself. I'm going to go back to our curves transformation. I'll put over preview. And we're going to do saturation again, but this time you'll notice the colors in the core of the Milky Way don't change nearly as much as the colors in the stars do. And I said that we had a little bit too much blue in some of these stars, so we're going to take some of the saturation out of them a little bit. And there those stars go, getting whiter and whiter and whiter just what we were kind of after there there we go and we can go the other way just to kind of demonstrate the point we can move it up and get very colorful stars and now you'll see that blue real, that we saw earlier really showing up they really dominate the image so we're going to take some of that out and last but not least before we do anything else we're going to run one final little Pix Insight tool called SCNR which tends, which we use to remove green because there's just not a whole lot of green in space. It doesn't remove it completely, it just removes a dominant effect of it. Now all of a sudden this looks, actually that may have been too much. I don't think I've ever seen a, C2, a CNR go overboard like that. Let's see, we'll run it down. We'll remove some of the dominant green. There we go, that's what we're after. So. There you go, Nolds. That's a quick tutorial, a quick rundown of some of the steps that you're looking at to process your astro image. Basically, the thing to remember is that you'll want to stretch the histogram with some kind of levels adjustment or histogram transformation tool in PixInsight, something along those lines. And then you can adjust the colors with something like curves or saturation tools. You can adjust sharpness with things like unsharp masks or local histogram equalization. And you can use masks to apply any or all of these tools or any other tools that your package might have to only specific parts of your image. Hope that was help you, helpful for you. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.